Today we battle it out. The new tool changer on the block, the Snapmaker U1, versus the Bamboo H2C, if you could call it a tool changer. Who's gonna win today on this or that? So I recently put out some videos on both of these machines. I've been running them non-stop and plan to continue testing, but in the meantime, let's do some comparing based on the comments that you people have left. I'm gonna try and keep this objective and simply compare the facts wherever possible because you might know that I'm a bamboo fanboy. But at the end, I'll give you my pick anyway between these two. I'm sure you're gonna be surprised. Let's jump right in and cover something that a lot of you have mentioned. The materials that these machines can print with. For starters, on the bamboo side, it can print anything, right? Carbon fiber composites that are super abrasive, styrene-based materials that love to warp and need a nice, consistent, enclosed, heat-soaked chamber if you want any chance of success while printing. The H2C is ready to take them all on in whatever nozzle you'd like, apparently. But I feel like there was something important about this point. I feel like I'm missing something. What was, let me look through my notes here. Yeah, H2C's great, H2C's great, Bamboo Fanboy, I get it. Oh yeah, flexibles are absolutely out of the question. The fact that Bamboo hasn't figured out how to make flexibles play nice with the AMS yet is just such a huge miss. However, the Bamboo can print at a much higher temperature and it's enclosed by default, but the whole system struggles to integrate TPU, and that's a bummer, objectively and subjectively. So the Snapmaker doesn't have nozzles that print quite as hot, they only go to 300 compared to Bamboo's 350, but there is an enclosure deal that's available for pre-ordered, as are the hardened nozzles and stuff. So the Snapmaker has some pieces available to help close the gap a bit for other materials. But of course the Snapmaker has the giant advantage that straight away it can handle flexibles. You feed it into the feeder motor and it goes into the printer. Imagine that! You know what else is crazy? That we only charge $2 a month for our Patreon. That's right, you can support our goal to do this full time by going to patreon.com slash keoprints, or whatever the link is. Check the link in the description and you can support us. You also get some extra goodies, just check it out. I'm not gonna bore you with that right now, we're talking about other, we're gonna, it's time for other stuff. All right, what about replacement parts? That's gotta be pretty expensive for both of these machines, right? Bamboo nozzle replacements are 30 bucks each, which I feel like isn't terrible considering the printer already comes with six of them. But it is a strike for bamboo because they don't come with six of the same nozzle. For some, this may be a good thing, like there's enough .4 nozzles in there to do a four color change on one side, and now you don't need to go out and buy a .2 nozzle or a .6 nozzle if you want that. But for me, just send six of the same nozzle so I can do a seven color print inside of the same print. You know what I mean? It'd be a little bit different if I could use the 0.4, the 0.6, and the 0.2 inside of the same print. Maybe that's a crazy take. Maybe I'm a crazy person. I don't know. I'm not crazy. You're crazy. For the Snapmaker, I came across a comment mentioning the lifespan of these tool heads being only like 200,000 swaps. I couldn't find anything to back that up specifically, but it's worth comparing the cost of the consumables. So although neither the bamboo nozzles or the Snapmaker tool heads are available at the time of recording, and we'll be getting into that a little bit more too, we can still make an objective assessment of the value proposition of replacing these parts. So the bamboo nozzles are like 40 bucks. They're available in high flow variants and four different sizes. And they're all hardened with the exception of the 0.2 nozzle. You don't want to put carbon fiber through an orifice that small. So really, that's a decent variety that's not all that expensive. Especially considering the fact that we're talking about a bamboo product. Not that expensive and bamboo often don't get used in the same sense. The Snapmaker replacement nozzles are much cheaper and come in a variety of sizes as well. You're only looking at 50 bucks for a four pack. You like that? I like that. I know you like that. But the tool head itself, which apparently is a wear item, is 64 bucks on its own. So I don't need to draw a conclusion. These are just things that you need to consider. And while we're discussing replacing these tool heads and nozzles and stuff, it's probably worth discussing how easy it is to replace these parts. For starters, both brands have a wiki available for their machines. These wikis offer step-by-step -step guides for things like nozzle swaps or troubleshooting tips, often using pictures and specific notes in the guide to the user. Both are very well featured and very useful. The bamboo nozzle swapping process is obviously super easy on the H2C. It just sticks to the nozzle rack using magnets, so that's not really a fair point in my opinion. But the process for swapping a nozzle on the Snapmaker toolhead doesn't seem too crazy anyway. It's a matter of a couple of screws and electrical connectors, and it looks like the same goes for replacing the whole toolhead. 
I haven't done either of them, but I've read online, so it must be true. Oh, oh, sorry, I just need to pick something up and show you how cool this Kyo logo is on the side of this shirt that you can get at keoprints.com. Sorry, I just have to get this thing here. Glad I got that. So the U1 nozzle swap isn't quite as easy as throwing a nozzle into the bamboo nozzle rack, sure, but either replacement for the Snapmaker nozzle or the tool head seems to be very easy for the average user to accomplish. I would say that's still very beginner friendly. No points will be deducted for either machines if we were even keeping track. Now for the topic of speed. And this one's controversial. This is the one that everybody seems to be commenting about. This is the one that everybody cares about. And rightfully so. This isn't what I was expecting either. The bamboo is slow. There's no other way to say it. It's slow. The tool head's big, so the print speed's slower than a single nozzle unit, for example, but also the filament swapping time is so slow. The nozzle swap happens super fast, which is great. And it heats up that nozzle super fast after the swap happens. Fantastic. But the time it takes to feed that filament from the AMS into the nozzle is a clear compromise that a lot of you are upset with. Sure, this nozzle swapping method has its advantages, but are they worth this apparent oversight in material swapping time? That's something you're going to have to ask yourself. Then on the other hand, the Snapmaker can swap immediately. It simply has to park its active tool head before heading over to one of the others, sitting and wait for it. That's like a 10 second process versus the H2C, which can take as long as 40 seconds. And this literally adds hours to prints. Not figuratively, this actually will add hours to prints, depending on how many color changes you've got. Then talking about print speed again, the Snapmaker can move quicker because it's a more standard setup in terms of the tool head design. At any point, it's only got one tool head, one nozzle, and one motor setup hooked on. No extra weight, just a simple setup subject to simple standard forces. And that results in much faster print times depending on what you're printing. Now the number of materials or the capacity of these machines is actually an interesting thing to get into. And it really does show how these machines are so very different from one another. The Snapmaker has a four tool head thing and that's about the size of it. You get four colors or four materials and nothing outside of that. With the Vortex system, on the other hand, the sky is the limit if you're really in need of an extra layer of functionality on top of your previous layers of functionality. Just think about it for a second. Every step on the bamboo multicolor ladder kind of builds on the previous step and is also enabled by the previous step. Let me explain. The first step. There's an AMS that makes it so one nozzle can print up to 16 different colors. And then they added a second nozzle to the tool head so you can use two different materials without any waste. Or if you want to add to that second step of a dual nozzle tool head, you can still purge two by leveraging the functionality of the AMS onto your second nozzle. And then if that isn't enough, let's peel back that multicolor onion just one more layer and add a third step of functionality. And that, of course, is the six nozzle swapping on one side of the tool head. We still use AMSs. We still have two nozzles. One of those nozzles just happens to have access to six nozzles. Each of the six swapping nozzles can handle a single color for sure, but if you absolutely need to, each one of those six nozzles can also use the purge method on top of all of the other flexibility that that brings. It's really difficult for me to wrap my head around the, the capability that the Vortex system offers. And I'm not sure exactly what application would demand this level of capacity. So if you have something that you use all of this expansive capacity for, let me know in the comments. But each nozzle can achieve material changes using whatever combination of every method that Bamboo offers. Material purge, dual nozzle tool head action, and full nozzle swapping. There's no denying that that is pretty crazy, and it's definitely more than the Snapmaker's four colors. That's just all there is to it. Now diving into the number of materials a little bit more, the bamboo has another interesting advantage because of its nozzle swapping system instead of a tool head swapping system. Nozzles are much smaller than tool heads. As such, bamboo doesn't need to find a place to store seven different tool heads. The nozzle swapping system is much more compact than a full rail of complete tool heads or half tool heads, and that allowed for them to do this expanded capability inside of an existing machine format. It's just the H series. It just fits inside of there. In fact, allegedly, you can upgrade your H2D to an H2C because it just fits inside of that architecture. But this isn't without its drawbacks. Most notably, the build area has been reduced from what we find in the rest of the H series of printers. But the compact nature of the Vortex system is certainly one of the stronger advantages. That in mind, the Snapmaker isn't a bulky waste of space either. It remains fairly compact, but that's helped by the fact that the machine was built around the idea of making it a tool changer. 
They weren't adapting a pre-existing machine to accommodate a tool changing system. They were making a tool changer. So though the back of the machine has a bit going on, the print area is still plenty big enough. And the overall footprint of the machine remains consistent with the competitors in the similar segment that it lives in. There is no denying the added bulk, but it doesn't appear to present in any meaningful way. That's just from my perspective anyway. But let's move on to something that actually matters. None of this, ooh, how much does it cost? Oh, can I get parts for it? Who cares? How does the thing print? Well, to put it short, Bamboo prints excellent. Snapmaker prints excellent. There isn't much to say here other than that. Both machines do very well. I've been printing on both of these guys for the past couple of weeks, and I can say both of them are printing at an excellent level of quality. I tend to be a pretty tough critic regarding the print quality, especially for the stuff that I sell on Etsy to customers. So for me, to trust a machine to fulfill my customer orders really means something. And I feel like the Snapmaker lives in that ballpark along with my fleet of bamboo machines. Both of these guys stack layers very nicely. Both of them have excellent color change boundaries, there's no gaps or overfills or anything like that. And the general stability and repeatability of both systems has given me nothing more to talk about here. If I really had to split hairs and make a subjective choice based on the stuff that I've printed, maybe I'd say the bamboo edges out the snap maker just a little bit on print quality. But again, that's only my subjective take based on the few hundred hours I've printed on both machines so far. That might change as I continue to wear these machines out, but for now, that's where I'm standing on print quality. Wait, I'm supposed to be drawing objective conclusions only. Whoops. All right, here's an objective take for you. Let's cover some pieces of the general user experience. The fact of the matter is, Bamboo offers a much better user experience in general. They have you covered from the very beginning of the process right up until the end. I'm talking about RFID tags on the filament so the machine knows what it's printing straight away, and other things like the Bamboo Handy app allowing you to print directly from your phone. That, of course, is enabled by Maker World, which is not only a super well-stocked 3D model repository, but it also has a host of loads of different tools and generators and stuff like that. Of course, print monitoring and mobile notifications for the app are super stable, and if you're on Team iPhone like me, you get a little widget on your home screen that shows you what your print uh, duration is and how much time's left. And of course, the hardware notoriously integrates well in their ecosystem in a way that no other manufacturer has quite been able to match. There's a lot to say about this, but we also need to mention the other side of it. This all works so well together because Bamboo's got a very tight leash on every part of the process. They can make everything work super well together and provide an excellent user experience as a result, but the inherent drawback with that is a huge deal for some people. This level of control means there's no room to color outside of the lines that Bamboo draws for you. And Bamboo notoriously does not like aftermarket stuff for their machines. What I can see from the Snapmaker regarding this point, though, is promising, if nothing else. The app isn't super well featured yet, but at least they've got RFID spools, so the machine can read what spool you're loading up and automatically get that set up for you. And you know what? The U1 can be found in Orca Slicer, not just Snapmaker Orca. It can be found in regular old Orca Slicer. That's incredible. If you ask Bamboo, that's a huge threat to your safety, but that's pretty incredible. The U1 doesn't appear to be nearly as locked down, and it's hard to say if they're going to go that way in the future or not, but as it stands right now, there's hope for a quality option outside of the Bamboo ecosystem available right now. And honestly, it'd be nice to see a company maintain a super high level of quality, a great user experience, loads of features and community interaction, all while maintaining an open framework, or at least a semi-open framework. I don't know, I don't really care. I'm on Team Bamboo. They can just tell me what to do with my machine. What can I say? I'm a sheep. Moving on to the thing that really bothers me, the price. I was joking before, of course, this is actually a very important point for a lot of you, and for me especially. I'm no different. The Snapmaker is much cheaper, starting at 1000 It's 150 bucks for the enclosure and $80 for the hardened nozzles. The Bamboo's very expensive at $2,500. So I'm saying a lot of prices in this video right now. There's sales happening. It's the middle of December. Give me a break and just check the links to see what everything actually costs. Because right now, as I'm making the video, it's different than when I made the script. I don't know what to tell you. This point can't be overlooked because it's the main point for most users looking to get into 3D printing or looking to upgrade their current machine. And I spent my real life money on both of these machines. These companies don't look at me. 
I've got affiliate links set up with Snapmaker, but Bamboo doesn't even give me that. That's fine because both of these machines are absolute rippers from what I've been able to tell, but goodness, the H2C is so expensive. And really, while we're talking about it, the Snapmaker's not actually cheap. It's $1,000. $1,000 is expensive. Can't all be money bags like that guy in the comment section. But for the value in that space, there's nothing to compare it against. Every other tool changer is more than double the cost of the U1. So by comparison, the $1,000 investment right this very second actually is pretty affordable. Who knows how long that's going to be the case, though. If I had to speculate a little bit, I would guess we're going to be seeing a lot of other tool changer options coming in like the next 8 to 10 months. Perhaps they'll come sooner. Perhaps they'll even be cheaper. For now, these two options are great, and I feel like the value for either solely depends on what you need them to accomplish. So I'm going to leave that judgment up to you, of course. How about the part availability? This is actually a tough one for me right now, and I'm going to get into why. So Bamboo is typically good about releasing a machine and offering replacement parts on their site day one. But recently they've been slipping on that. I only have four of the .4 nozzles right now, so I can't actually use all seven colors just yet. And when I went to order a set of nozzles, they weren't available yet. Once they were available, they sold out immediately, of course. Now, if we add to that the fact that Bamboo's been talking about features that aren't released yet, they seem to be following the trend or reacting to the trend instead of setting it like they used to do. And if you don't believe me, let's just look back to when the Snapmaker U1 went live on Kickstarter and broke all the records and everything like that. What did Bamboo do? Well, they released the thing about their Vortex. Look at our tool changer. You don't need to look at that tool changer. Reacting to the trend. But what about the Vortex upgrade kit that allows you to add the nozzle swapper to your H2D, for example? Not available at launch. What about the filament buffer that allows for either AMS to feed into either nozzle by redirecting the filament? Not available at launch. That's like I'm playing Halo Infinite all over again. On the other hand, the U1 has nothing available right now at all. I'm recording this in December, and if I wanted to order a U1, I would be waiting until March or April to get it. The replacement tool heads are also available on a pre-order only basis right now. Heck, even the replacement build plates are only available through a pre-order. So I want to criticize Bamboo for being behind the curve and not having everything available day one. And I do. I criticize Bamboo for that. What the heck? Because now they're just like every other 3D printer brand that's kicking around playing the same games that everybody's always played, when that didn't used to be the case. But then at the same time, the Snapmaker doesn't have anything available right now. If I had a tool head pop on this sucker, I would be waiting for my pre-ordered tool head to be fulfilled. Ah, oh, that's a tough one for me, man. So there you go. That was a lot of information to get through, and really I was impressed with the Snapmaker's ability to hang against the H2C. I'm definitely Team Bamboo, but the H2C is a very hard sell with a machine as versatile, reliable, stable, and affordable as the Snapmaker. But for some reason, I think I would still buy the H2C over the Snapmaker if I was asked to do it again. And for reference, once again, I've got affiliate links in the description. None for Bamboo. I don't get any commission from them. They don't know I exist. I should be steering you towards the Snapmaker because I can make commission off of you buying it from my link. And as good of a machine as that is, I'm still a fan of the bamboo. Anyway, I'm happy to report that both machines are great, they clearly serve different audiences, so I feel like this is a, a yes and instead of no or. You know what I mean? We can have both. We can all be friends. I think there is room for either, but it's clear that objectively the Snapmaker is a much better all-arounder. But really, that's my two cents. If you want to support the content that you're seeing here, check out our $2 a month Patreon. It's only $2 a month, and you'll be helping us in our goal to make content full-time. And we're grinding to get as much content out as we can, and we're also working on some stuff in the background that I think you're going to like. So, if you want to support that grind, you can go to Patreon, or you can go to keelprints.com, pick up a shirt, hat, or hoodie. I've got on the You Like That shirt. That's our second channel where we do challenge videos. You can go over there and support that as well. Bye.